for us even as we start off yes past yes Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful class that we are about to have. God, we thank you for setting us apart for children as your daughter, as your son. God, as we are learning about holiness, uh, help us to listen to the class carefully and to put into practice so that we can glorify your name above all else. So that when people look at us, they will know that. we are serving a god who is holy who is mighty and who is awesome through all our actions through all our words and through every single thing that we do i pray for all my classmates god i pray that uh, they will have good wifi connection throughout the session and there won't be any obstacles any disturbance we will learn and we will listen we will learn and we will live an amazing life we bless pastor deepika we bless every student in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you so much uh yes um so uh, we've uh, looked at the entire section on holiness uh, we looked at different aspects and now you know if you were to look at your notes um there's a second section called repentance um recovery and restoration so uh, we are moving into the second section uh, of this course um and we'll just have maybe a couple of sessions on that and then uh, the third section would be the overcoming life you know how to live in victory um so we would move into that um you know about two sessions from now so um today uh, we will kind of begin looking at this whole um, topic of repentance and we'll you know get into more detail the next session maybe because uh, the first step you know to salvation itself is repentance right and then uh, once we are saved uh, we continue to uh, walk in holiness through daily repentance you know so um, repentance is uh, very basic to the whole idea of holiness uh, so we will begin by looking at some fundamental things about repentance in this uh, you know in this session so um, like we all know uh, you know when jesus was on this earth he was uh, preaching you know repent repent for the kingdom of god is here you know so um, uh, the the whole uh, process of reconnecting with god begins with repentance uh, maybe we can look at uh, mark chapter 1 verse 15 uh, where uh, you know it kind of talks about this mark chapter 1 verse 15 if someone could read out please Mark, Mark chapter one verse fifteen, and saying time the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Okay, we see that actually there are two things mentioned over here that uh, you know um, the people are are being asked to do. First is repent, and second is believe. And if you look at the order in which those two uh, you know uh, uh, action words are mentioned, repentance comes first. and then belief comes um you know that's because it's the holy spirit uh, who convicts us uh, who brings us to that realization that we are sinful and uh, once we become open uh, to you know repent once we come once we become open to his convicting work then he gifts us this you know uh, gift of faith so that we are able to place our faith in jesus we would not even be able to do that on our own if it wasn't for the holy spirit's help uh, so uh maybe we can actually look at you know a couple of verses which talk about that uh john 16 8 to 11 you know that's basically where you have uh, uh, the passage which says that it is the holy spirit who convicts of sin righteousness and judgment now anyone who is open to the work of the holy spirit anyone who is you know responding to what he is uh, you know prompting in our hearts such people uh, those who have this kind of an openness the holy spirit will increase his activity in the heart of that person and bring them to a point where uh, that person is willing you know to respond where that person is willing to uh, to hear more 
and at that time the holy spirit gives that person the free gift of faith where they will be able to take that final step and you know actually just submit to the lord jesus place their entire trust in him their entire future in him and say okay from now on you o oh lord will be my master and i am you know willing to follow you so uh, repentance comes first and repentance happens when any person however ignorant they may be about the bible and all of that if they have an openness in their heart to you know the 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 work which the holy spirit is doing where he is convicting the world of sin righteousness and judgment so anyone who's open to this they are the ones who start becoming repentant they feel convicted of their sinfulness and they wish that they could live differently so all these are all these are things which the holy spirit kind of stirs up inside that person and as that person becomes more and more open the holy spirit himself gives them that uh, gift of faith so that they will be able to believe uh, we see that in ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 if someone could read out that ephesians 2 8 to 9 Ephesians chapter 2 yes 8 to 9 for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourself it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast okay, so uh, no person can say on my own i was able to believe in jesus christ that is a gift uh, that faith is a gift that the holy spirit gives to us uh, so uh, we repent and uh that starts off the process which leads to salvation uh, we repent then the holy spirit gives us the faith to believe we place our faith in him and then and then you know we are saved uh, and we are sealed with the holy spirit uh, but after salvation we continue to have to repent for different things uh, because uh, you know of our um, sinfulness i mean we continue to do um, we continue to fail the lord you know so whenever we do that we would have to continue going to him uh, for repent uh, for forgiveness you know uh, with an attitude of repentance so um, maybe we can look at a couple of verses about what ac actually happens in that moment of salvation um act chapter 2 verse 38 could someone read out um then peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit okay there would be a remission of sins those sins which we did in the past the sins that we in fact we will be doing in the future they are all you know cut off cancelled um so they no longer are held against us so we are completely forgiven and uh, it is repentance who, that leads to that once we have repented and once uh, the holy spirit has given us the faith to believe in jesus christ then in that moment all our uh, sins are completely forgiven including even the future sins that we would be committing uh, all of that is completely forgiven so that now we can be declared completely righteous and we can you know uh, put on the righteousness of christ um so at that time uh this is what happens for us matthew chapter 4 verses 16 to 17 matthew 4 16 to 17 if someone could read out matthew chapter 4 verses 16 to 17 the people living in darkness have seen a great light on those who living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned from that time when jesus began to preach repent for the kingdom of heaven is near okay so um the people were living in darkness and then you see the light comes and it says you know uh, they were living in the land of the shadow of death and to such people jesus jesus comes offering light so um when a person repents uh, what they are basically doing is they are saying okay i will now no longer you know be my own master i choose to accept 
uh, Jesus to be my Lord. So you know, we we get down from the throne of our lives and we allow Him to be seated on that throne. And once He becomes King, once He begins ruling inside us, uh, then that kingdom of light starts coming in. You know, um, um, we start getting flooded by the light of God. Uh, so, so that's the turning point. Up to then, uh, as long as we are in control of our own lives and we exert our free will and say, no, I choose to live in my own way, up to that point, uh, you know, uh, when we are on the throne, there is only darkness. And so you have to place him on the throne. And once you do that, you know, your life starts getting flooded with his light. So uh, those who are living in the shadow of death, you know, light dawns upon them. The light begins to shine upon them. Why? Because now they have chosen to place, uh, you know, the, the Lord Jesus on the throne. So repentance, it, it leads to the beginning of a new rule in our lives. And in fact, even after salvation, Every time we repent, it's like we are consciously saying, I know for temporarily I kind of took over Lord, but now you, you know you take back your um, you know your leadership. I will follow you. So every time we repent, it's like you know, we are placing him back on the throne, and when he is on the throne, he brings in his light. Uh, our, our life gets flooded with uh, more and more with his light, and that's a you know, wonderful way to live, right? I mean, who wants to live in the darkness? Um, uh, who wants to have, you know, defeat in their lives? Uh, so it, it's a, so repentance is this, this power in repentance. And in fact, there's something else also, which, you know, Acts 3.19 says uh, about repentance. If someone could read out Acts 3.19, please. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Okay, so that is when the times of refreshing start coming. Um, as long as we don't repent, as long as we are holding on to our sins, there is no refreshing. There's only, um, you know, that uh, sense of guilt. And also God cannot act freely on our behalf because we are blocking him off. Uh, and so um, nothing seems to work. But when we repent, then times of refreshing begin to come into our lives. The light of God's rule, you know, begins to um, you know, flood our lives. And that is when everything begins to change for us. So. Um, repentance is something that we uh, that is needed for sinners, but it is also something which is very very vital for believers, so that they can have these times of refreshing, so that they can continue to have this uh, you know light of God uh, lighting up their lives. So in Ma Mark chapter two verse seventeen, you know Jesus is speaking uh, and he says, uh, "Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous." but sinners to repentance. So Jesus says, I have come specifically to call sinners to repentance. But then he, you know, later in, in Revelation, we see that repentance is not just something that is being um, uh, you know, asked of sinners. God is asking repentance of even believers. And uh, we see that uh, with regard to you know those seven churches in the in you know in the book of revelation uh, most of them were asked to repent of one thing or the other so uh, you know we've all gone through that first uh, act of repentance where we decided that we would no longer continue in our sinful ways and we chose to submit ourselves to the lord so that act of repentance we have finished uh, performing but now now all these things that the, the the churches in Revelation were asked to repent of, I think those things apply to us even now. So it's nice to see uh, what are the things that God asked these churches to repent of, and you know we can check our lives to see whether we too need to repent in those areas. Um, because even as you choose to repent in these areas, you automatically become more holy. OK, so I mean, it's not like as if you are pursuing holiness and saying, oh, I will make myself holy. I will I will do this, this, this and become holy. Uh, those are things that we do. But, you know, just these acts of repentance where you are uh, willing to uh, set right 
the things which are wrong, that automatically leads to greater holiness. So this is something that we need to pay attention to. So you know, let's just very quickly go through some of the uh, things that God asks these believers to repent of. The first thing, of course, would be in Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, if someone could read out Revelation 2, verse 5. Revelation 2, chapter, 5, chapter 2, verse 5. Yes. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yes. Um, now, uh, you know, just for us to kind of understand what is being talked about over here, uh, if we go back to the previous chapter, Revelation chapter 1, uh, verses 12 to 20, over there we see that, um, you know, uh, John looks at Jesus standing uh, among the seven golden lampstands. Okay, so, and um, he sees that uh, Jesus is also holding seven stars in his hand. And it's like a kind of a vision, you know, it's like, uh, it, it, it has a symbolic meaning you know, some kind of metaphorical meaning. Uh, and uh, so then Jesus explains uh, what John has seen. And this is what Jesus says. He says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Uh, so it's like as if uh, in front of God's throne, you have all of these uh, lamps, you know, lampstands, and each lampstand uh, represents a church. And so it's like God is saying, my eyes are always upon my churches, you know, the ones that who, are, who that are truly God's churches, are the ones who, which are trying to you know live according to his values and, and treat him as Lord and Master. So it's like as if, you know, um, symbolically, God has got all these lampstands in front of him, and each of them represents a church and uh, as for the uh, seven stars in his hand uh, here it's not talking about uh, you know angelic beings it's talking about actual normal uh, people uh, the, the 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 angels of the seven churches are just basically the pastors the leaders of the seven churches and they are in his hand you know, I mean, um, they are that important to him. So God is literally holding uh, these angels, these pastors in his hands. Um, you know, so uh, if you look in Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, uh, the first message, you know, it's addressed to the angel of um, uh, Ephesians. So that's just basically the pastor of that particular uh, Ephesian church. And so, you know, uh, Jesus says, write, write this message to that angel, to that pastor, and, you know, tell him that these are the things that they should do. So over here, it's not talking about any angelic beings. It's just talking about the pastors of the churches. And uh, so um, here in our Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, this is the warning that God is giving that particular church, you know, and God is, uh, sent the, uh, wants this message written and sent to the pastor over there, uh, you know, in the, of that church, to say, um, repent and do the things you did at first. And if you don't, you know, the Lord says, I will remove your lampstand from its place. So no, your church will no longer be represented in front of me. I will no longer consider your church as, you know, one of my uh, churches. It will no longer be considered part of the body of Christ. Uh, so. One thing that is very, very important in God's eyes is that uh, we should have the same level of commitment uh, that we had in the very beginning, uh, both individually and you know, as a corporate body, as a church. Uh, we must continue to have the same level of loyalty and commitment uh, that we had in the uh, very beginning. So uh, this is something that we can you know, uh, examine ourselves for. We can look at ourselves and you know, ask ourselves, um, year by year, have I been growing in my commitment and loyalty? Have I been growing in, oh, in my efforts to overcome sin and live in holiness? Uh, or do I just see a kind of you know same um, 
uh, stagnation. You know, I mean, I've, I've, there's been no growth. And uh, generally, when there is no growth, we end up backsliding. In fact, we can't stay in the same level. Um, so either we are in the process of growing or we are in the process of backsliding. There's no maintaining status quo as far as uh, you know the Christian walk is concerned. Uh, you will observe that if you're not in the process of growing, you're kind of you know uh, in the process of backsliding. So uh, so we need to first of all ask ourselves: uh, Am I growing, uh, or have I you know uh, lost that first um, you know commitment which I had? And if that is the case, then we are asked to repent of that. A second thing that we believers would probably need to watch out for are all these false uh, teachings that keep coming in. Um, you know, the, those people in, in the early church, they had a different set of wrong doctrines troubling them. Uh, now we have a different set. Uh, we have all these um, teachings on hyper grace and uh, you know the focus on prosperity and wealth, material wealth. Uh, so those are some of the things which are coming in. And then uh, uh, we also have wrong doctrines about uh, salvation uh, and you know um, so all of these things we need to guard ourselves against uh, all such wrong doctrines so in revelation chapter 2 verses 15 and 16 the people are warned um, not to hold on to the wrong teachings of the nicolaitans um, maybe someone can read out that revelation chapter 2 verses 15 and 16 Uh, can I know the reference again? Uh, Revelation 2, 15 and 16. Okay, Revelation chapter 2 is 15 and 16. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with a the sword of my mouth. Now over here, these were people who um, believed that because now they are free in Christ, uh, Christ Jesus has set them free from the law. Uh, so now, because they have been set free from the law, they believe that it's all right for them to do whatever they wish. So uh, they were indulging in immoral immorality. And plus, they were also indulging in occult practices, you know, kind of getting involved in um, things to do with evil spirits, uh, you know, witchcraft and things like that. Uh, so they, they were saying that now, because they have been set free by Jesus Christ, uh, they no longer have to follow rules and regulations, and they are free to do whatever they want because God has, you know, um, He's kind of reserved them for Himself, so they cannot lose their salvation. And um, so uh, today we may not have Christians who are know how openly going and you know living in immorality or um, getting into occult practices, but this attitude we see even today, right, uh, where people think that okay, now because I have my ticket to heaven. I can do what I want. You know, my salvation is safe. My seat is reserved over there in heaven. Uh, so that's the kind of attitude. So here, uh, you know, the uh, Jesus is warning the believers in this church and he's telling, um, you know, you need to repent of this false doctrine, this kind of false teaching that has come in. So we may not be, you know, believing in the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, but that danger is there. Way we think, oh, my salvation is, you know, now uh, safe and secure. So it's all right for me to compromise. It's all right for me to do my own thing because God will anyway forgive. You know, that would be a very dangerous attitude. So if we see that in ourselves, we need to repent. And then another thing, not only should we be repenting of, uh, you know, any wrong uh, doctrines that we are personally following, we must also make sure that we are not encouraging that kind of um, that kind of teaching in our churches which means we together would have to take a public stand against anyone who is trying to bring in uh, wrong teachings and if we just say you know uh, if we follow that policy of you know live and let live that's not uh, going to work so if we are aware that there's someone in the church who is going around encouraging people to practice something which is wrong then we uh, together, you know, uh, we who, you know, are faithful to the Lord, we will have to take a stand against that person uh, and take disciplinary action. So if we have that casual attitude of, okay, fine, that person has his own views, you know, it's all right. 
um, it is not all right if that person is encouraging people to move away from the truth of God's word. It is not all right. It is not something to be tolerated. Um, so um, holiness involves also having to take a stand. Uh, you know, even if that person is someone who is who is respected, who is influential, um, we would actually have to take a stand against that person and say, uh, you know, brother or sister. Um, you cannot continue you know spreading this kind of false teachings uh, if you continue to do that then you know you would have to leave the church you can no longer be part of our community it's a very awkward step to have to take especially if that person is respected by everyone um, and which is what happened you know in uh, uh, the early church uh, where when you had all of these judaizers you know who came uh, to the galatian church and uh, they were so highly respected. They were so influential. Even Peter hesitated to take any action against them. Uh, rather than you know uh, taking strict action against them and throwing them out of the church, he began to kind of start using double standards. You know, um, um, earlier he used to be so uh, you know uh, 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 loving towards the Gentiles. He used to sit with them and have the Lord's uh, Supper along with them. And then when these very powerful, influential people came there and began to you know, talk about how it is important to even follow the Jewish rituals, what does Peter do? I mean, imagine Peter, the leader of one of the major leaders of the church. He begins to withdraw himself from the um, from the uh, from the Gentile believers. He no longer sits with them and eats with them. You know, he, uh, uh, and then Paul is really angry. And how does he correct the situation? He publicly addresses it in public. He says to Peter, "What you are doing is wrong." You are allowing yourself to be influenced by these people just because they are so highly respected and just because they are so influential. You you, you should not be you know practicing double standards like this. Uh, so um, this is a very very serious thing in God's eyes. Uh, so uh, Revelation chapter two verses twenty to twenty three talks about that. Um, yeah, that's four verses. If someone could read out because you know there are a whole lot of wordings over there which are kind of important. Um, Revelation chapter 2, 20 to 23, please. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess by her teaching. She misleads my servant into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds and I'll repay each one of you according to your deeds. Okay, see, on the outside, this person, uh, uh, you know, who called herself a prophetess, on the outside, she probably was someone very, you know, influential. Um, she was someone who was able to catch the attention of people and, you know, get them to... Uh, follow her ways. So uh, here uh, she's called Jezebel. That may not have been her name. Uh, but then you know it kind of refers back to the Old Testament Jezebel, who also had a very influential role in leading people into sin. So maybe you know symbolically that name is being applied over here to this particular uh, person as well. So you this so this was someone who was in a position of leadership. She was like a prophetess in the church, but she was leading people away from the true teaching of God. And uh, so uh, here uh, the Lord says, those who are you know, uh, supporting her teaching and following that, uh, I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. So um, it, it, it's not enough that uh, you know we, we keep ourselves holy. Uh, we must also make sure that we do not even tolerate other people who are you know, spreading false teachings. Uh, we must not tolerate them and we must uh, you know, have them removed from our churches. So repentance can even be that. Am I just for the sake of avoiding awkwardness? Am I just overlooking something that can be dangerous to the, uh, to the church? 
to the you know to the group of uh, believers that you know i am uh, working among or living among so we would have to take a stand um another act of repentance that uh, we talk uh, that, that is talked about here in the book of revelation um is in revelation 3 verses 1 to 3 and uh, yeah this is something which can really happen to you know uh, a lot of us if we are not careful revelation chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 if someone could read out please revelation chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 to the angel of the church in sardis right these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know your deeds and you have a reputation of being alive but you are dead wake up strength and what remains and is about to die for i have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my god remember therefore what you have received heard obey it and repent but if you do not wake up i will come like a thief and you will not know at what time i will come to you here the main allegation that you know jesus is making against the people of this church is he says i have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my god you know uh, or um, uh, in the translation that was just read out um, you know the the deeds that you're doing are incomplete so in what sense was it incomplete um, uh, we we see in the earlier portion in verse 1 yeah you have a reputation of being alive but you are dead so when they would open their mouths when they would talk when they would preach it's like as if they are full of knowledge full of wisdom uh, they know their scripture so well but where's the point it's an incomplete faith if you're not also practicing it if you're not also applying it so you know this happens to us even as we kind of you know have been in church for a very long time and we know our scriptures so well we can pray so beautifully uh, we are you know moving very freely in the gifts all of this is going on but in god's eyes he says our deeds are incomplete they are unfinished if we have not you know uh, really been putting those things into practice so by reputation we may be, we you know people may think that we are alive but actually we are dead uh, if we are not holding fast so that's why it says over here in verse 3 hold it fast and repent so whatever you have received and heard hold it fast and repent um so whenever we have more knowledge given to us whenever there is a new revelation from god it's not enough to just say okay now i know something more and tick it off in our mind no you don't you're not just adding to it to your list of knowledge it is something that you will have to hold on uh, hold it hold on to it fast in the sense you choose to apply it practice it then god would say that your deeds are complete in his eyes uh, so this is an area in which we would need to you know repent if you and i are people who have been gathering knowledge gathering revelation god has been giving us rhema words and you know we are we are, we are full of uh, of of his word but if we are not putting it into practice if we are not holding on to it fast like it says over here then uh, we are in you know in danger of uh, god's judgment so the lord says over here hold fast to whatever you have heard and received now um, this especially is something that you know applies to people uh, uh, who are teachers you know we are teaching so in the process of teaching there's so much that we learn and if i'm only learning all of that just so that you know i, I can teach where's the point when god looks at me all he will see is unfinished uh, deeds on the other hand even as i'm learning more and more if i'm actually putting those things into practice then you know my faith is complete uh, whatever i am doing is pleasing in god's eyes and it's not the same for uh, i mean I, and it, this doesn't just apply to teachers it also applies to students you know students like you who have you know uh, signed up for courses uh, like this so here you are uh, you're gaining a lot of additional knowledge there's a lot of new uh, revelation that comes even as you you know you listen to your different lectures now it's not enough to just have gathered that information in your heads um, 
when God looks at you, he will see only unfinished deeds. If, you know, it's like it says over here, if you have not been uh, holding fast to what you have received and heard. So it is not enough to just gather knowledge. We must also apply it. And if, if our attitude has not been that, uh, then, you know, we would need to repent of that because then we will be perfect in God's eyes. Our deeds will be perfect in God's eyes. Um, another thing uh, that we see in um, that, you know, another area where we would need repentance is this Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 to 21. Um, in Revelation 3, verse 15, the Lord says, I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. OK, so um, these are people who still love God. They have not rejected him completely. So in that sense, they are warm. OK, they're not hot. They're not hot for God. They're not passionate for God. But at least they're kind of warm in the sense they are still kind, they still kind of love him. They still kind of respect him. But God is not satisfied with that. Uh, he says, because of your attitude where, you know, you're kind of warm, you're kind of lukewarm and not really passionate. Um, what is what is that uh, led to? Because of that attitude, he says, you have become, um, in verse um, 17, the Lord says, you have now become wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Uh, so you see, they have not rejected God altogether. They still love him. They still, you know, uh, stand up during the uh, you know worship time and sing praises to God, but um, they are not passionate for the things of God anymore. That fire has gone, and so without realizing it, in the process, they have become uh, poor, blind, and naked. Um, so, without realizing it, you know, they are becoming blind. They are no longer able to see God's word clearly, catch what God is saying, apply that to their lives, sharpen themselves, you know, spiritually, grow in their inner man. All that is not happening. There's serious stagnation going on and they don't even realize it because they're always saying to themselves, oh, we love God. We worship him. We sing praises to him. So they are under the impression that you know, uh, they are uh, a very loving bunch of people, but they don't realize that um, it's all just now, just outward. You know, uh, the love is just expressed in 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 rituals, in performances, but it's there's no real uh, work of of improvement. There's no real work of repentance where on a daily basis they're examining themselves and finding out if there's anything lacking. They're no longer hearing from the Holy Spirit, you know, who constantly um, corrects us, who teaches us. So they're no longer hearing from him. Um, they are um, just going about their outward religious show. You know, so here Jesus says, such people, without you realizing it, you have become poor, blind, and naked. And uh, so you would have to, you know, sharpen yourself. You would have to take a serious stand against every wrong there is in your life and then that that is being hot for god okay so uh, lukewarmness is where you just kind of express a love for him but you don't really correct the things that need to be corrected on the other hand a person who is hot or passionate for the lord that would be a person who is on a daily basis examining themselves and sharpening themselves correcting themselves uh, so these are all the different things uh, that God addressed regarding those uh, churches, you know, in the book of Revelation. And those same learnings apply to us today. In the same way, he was watching them closely and he observed all these things in them. In the very, very same way, even today, he is watching us and he's watching our churches and he's observing. He does notice these things. So we may have this outward show of, you know, um, having worship and having nice uh, uh, sounding sermons. But if there is no constant change inside us on a daily basis, uh, if there is no, uh, you know, accepting of correction every time the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, brings something to our mind, if that is not happening, uh, it leads to a kind of deadness. 
and the sooner we repent of this deadness uh, the better because otherwise you know we will become very slack uh, we will think that we are safe when actually we are not safe uh, so that would be a, a risk you know so uh, we need to repent of these things um, moving on to another aspect of repentance you know today what we are doing is um, there are like 12 uh, very very short short chapters you know in the in the repentance section in your notes uh, and some of them are like just half a page they just like different um, aspects of repentance so we are actually today you know trying to go through the first six okay so the first six uh, chapters uh, of repentance uh, are, are what we are kind of trying to cover today and uh, the next session you know we'll go through the other six so sorry just kind of hold on a minute yeah uh, so just to look at uh, the definition of repentance, have a clearer understanding of what is involved in that. Um, if someone could read out Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, please. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Uh, it says here that God wants everyone to come to uh, repentance. The Greek word over there is metanoa or metanoia, or however you pronounce it. I do not know how to pronounce it. But you know, he wants everyone to come to, uh, uh, to metanoia. And so this basically, this word, this is the meaning that it carries. It is basically you having a uh, disgust for your past sinful life. Okay, so you, you are disgusted with what you were before. And now you're saying, I want to change into someone else. So, you know, you, there are a whole bunch of um, uh, definitions regarding this word metanoia. But this basically brings it out. It involves two things. First of all, you're not satisfied with the way you are. In fact, when you look at your attitudes, when you look at the, you know, your um, your lukewarmness, uh, when you look at your lack of passion for God, you're not just comfortable with the idea. You are actually disgusted with who you are, with what you are, and so you you decide, I'm not going to stay like this. I am going to change for the better. You know with the help of the holy spirit so it's a conscious decision which you make uh, so this is what true repentance is even at the time of salvation that's basically what happened right there are people who said uh, that uh, i do not like the way i have lived so far and i do not wish to continue in that manner now i choose to come under this jesus christ let him be my lord and master and you know i will follow him he will help me to live in a different way so that's basically what we did even at the point of salvation. Now we continue to have that kind of an attitude. We are no longer satisfied or complacent about these things, you know, which are um, kind of uh, rotting inside. We want to get rid of them. We are disgusted with them. And so we take a stand and we say, uh, I will no longer continue to live in these things, but rather I will come out and be different. You know, I will change for the better with the Lord's help. So that basically would be what metanoia is uh, is all about. Uh, Isaiah 55, 6 to 9 also uh, talks about repentance. Uh, what does it say? Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 9, if someone could read out. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 to 9 Seek the Lord while he may be found call on him while he is near let the wicked forsake his ways and the evil man his thoughts let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord as the heaven are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts yeah so if we see over here here, uh, re uh, repentance is basically involving these two things. First, 
uh, we choose to forsake you know the unrighteous thoughts that we have and we choose to forsake the wicked uh, deeds that we are doing so there's an outright clear stand where you say i will no longer just be satisfied you know with all these unrighteous thoughts which are running through my head i'm going to take action against them i i i want to be different i want my thoughts to be different so you actually take a stand and you say i will no longer continue being comfortable with these unrighteous thoughts which are there in my mind in the same way when it comes to actions no longer am i just going to continue walking in these wicked ways you know knowing that they are wrong no it's time for me to take action so i will make a conscious effort to stop doing these you know uh, these wicked deeds so it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very um it's a very clear action step that you are taking it's not just something that you're thinking vaguely in your mind and say oh yeah i need to change that is not repentance repentance is when you actually take those steps and make those sacrifices to cut off those things which are wrong that would be actual repentance and uh, so even as you forsake these unrighteous thoughts and these wicked ways what are you doing at the same moment you are you know it says um, uh, in verse 7 isaiah 55 verse 7 let the wicked forsake their ways and then it says let them turn to the lord so even as you are turning away from these things which are wrong simultaneously you are also turning towards the lord and this is what you basically do you turn to the lord and you begin to align your thoughts with his thoughts you begin to align your ways with his ways so there are people who are comfortable with the thoughts that they have imperfect you know though, though those thoughts are they're happy with their thoughts they're happy with their ways that leads to spiritual stagnation on the other hand if you are a person who says it's not enough for me to be at this level god's thoughts are higher than my thoughts god's ways are higher than my ways and it's going to take effort but i want to reach that i want to reach uh, my uh, i want my thoughts to reach that level where i start thinking the way he thinks i want my ways to be such that i start living in the way you know jesus lived so it is going to take a lot of effort and commitment to do that but that would be actual repentance uh, repentance is not just us continuing at our own level and being satisfied with our thoughts and our ways we choose to realign ourselves we choose to align ourselves with his thoughts and his ways so, and we do this on a daily basis so every day you know god comes to us and you know i mean um, if i'm just a person you know who's having my devotions um, in a very light hearted manner and then god comes to me and says you know the way you are having your devotions i don't see any devotion in this <laughs> you know so you need to um, you, know, you need to be more passionate about how you're spending your time with me so let's just say that god says that to me if i say to him no no this is quite a comfortable way of doing it i mean there are there are other people whom i know who are not even you know reading their bible um, i on the other hand at least try to do this every day so if you're just comfortable with your own thoughts and your own ways then that is not repentance god has spoken a word of correction so what do you do now even though it's going to take effort you're going to actually take that extra step and say okay god is not pleased with the way i am doing my devotions so you wait on the lord and you ask okay lord how can i improve it how can i change this you go to godly people and you ask them uh, you know um, uh, what can i do to make my uh, you know a quiet time more meaningful you know so so you take these steps and you start moving towards uh, his level what he considers as actually devotion and you know interaction so you want you want you you want to have an actual interaction with him so you go to him and you start reaching out to him at you know has his level in a way which will satisfy him and then the lord would be you know uh, pleased with our uh, with with our desire to change so repentance is, is us not being satisfied with where we are true repentance is, is where we reach out to him and align ourselves with his way of thinking and we align ourselves with his lifestyle that will be uh, that will take effort but that will be something which will honor god and uh, you know he will regard that as being uh, true repentance um, so uh, we'll actually now you know uh, go for a break you know if all of us could log back again um, 
by 11 o'clock all right so yeah let's we can take our break now